Long Key Bridge. You've been fishing there, what, since you were five years old? Pretty much, I mean, all, all my life. I've gotten the privilege of fishing up and down the Keys and you know, quite a few spots, and really haven't found anything that's much better. Hooked up! You're just lucky to be there, man. It's a really beautiful time of day. It's really cool that you're surrounded by these big fish. If you get to catch one, even better. Here it is, he's on. <laughs> oh! <laughs> K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. Tell you what, I can guarantee you those tarpon are going to be biting, because I'm already sweating. Yeah. If you sweat when you're just getting t your rigs tied, <laughs> you get bit by a couple of mosquitoes before you make it to the <laughs> boat, it's time for tarpon. There's a lot of truth to that. Okay, I got one. Ready to roll here. So yeah, the, the tarpon have been just showing up. I mean, this weather changed and they are flooding in right now. So I, it, you know, I'm not sure what we're gonna find today, but they ought to be somewhere. I think we'll look for the little ones at first. We mm -hmm. can sight fish those, and, um, but I think these big ones are gonna flood in on this, this outgoing tide this evening. It starts going out about four and the peak of the outgoing is about seven o'clock and sunsets at 7.30, so that's it's about as good as it gets for tarpon biting. Whenever that sunset lines up with the uh, peak of that outgoing tide, I always like that. Okay. Good. All right. Let's do it. We had a cool day where we got you know beautiful weather. Um, we decided to leave late because uh, I knew we had the good tides late into the evening. So um, we took our time and left after lunch. Yeah. I mean, if you're gonna fish till dark, then you know might as well. Might as well do that. So we got a little lunch at Angler and Ale and then took off after that and uh, had our bait all set up from the bait guy. You know, we didn't even have to catch the mullet. We can, you can buy the mullet if you're, if you're not comfortable with catching them or you don't have time. And at this point we were like, let's just meet for lunch and then we'll just, we'll just have the mullet. And so we bought the mullet, we're ready to go. Yeah, and we got out there, you know, midday, the current had just started to trickle out. This is where, you know, if you look on the tide graphs, you see that there was a, a morning outgoing tide that was pretty big. And then the, the afternoon incoming tide was, you know, really small. And then this, this evening tide starting about, it was about three o'clock, I guess started going out. Just this massive spike you know that that's the strength of the water it was going to be you know a longer tide like an eight hour tide into the strength it was going to dump really hard a lot of current flow and there's no question in my mind the fish know that's coming they know it's coming and they're looking forward to it so at the end of that incoming tide they really weren't biting very good they were just you know we saw the fish we could see them you know the water was clear enough we could see them they were under the bridge i mean a couple of those spots i mean like there's a hundred fish there tom but they weren't biting but the beginning of that outgoing tide you know you could just see all of a sudden you know there was just a different feel to it and uh and we started off with that slow slack water of using the dead bait this is where live bait is is very good and often the best but not always and on that slack water before it started running those fish are just laying on the bottom just kind of chilling and um and you know you just butterfly to mullet up there and, and just threw them back there and just kind of let them let them float down to the bottom and i think you know i you know i wasn't able to see it you know because it's you know it's too far away but you know i visioned those tarpon are just smelling that coming by and just kind of nosing up to it and just just inhale it and uh you hook one right away there he goes that's the one that's the one that's a tarpon for sure that's a tarpon Let's go. Yo, oh, off. I was just oh, saying, man. it's nice and warm. Nice and well, you know they're gonna be here, but man. What do you do, get you yeah, around the bridge? Yeah, he just slowly, slowly, slowly started going that way, and I'm sure he hit that bridge. Yeah. I didn't never you. felt him hit the bridge, but yeah. I didn't, I'm, I didn't I, get us going fast enough, sorry. I lost, us, I lost it way back on the leader. Just went right through. Went right through, I lost about six feet a leader. Hmm. That's all right. Well, they're fighting. Definitely a tarp. 
Definitely a tarp in there, smoking out. Come up one more time, boy. There he is. <laughs> oh, I love when they do that. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Hawks K. Find what lures you. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. Waypoint, the destination for outdoor entertainment. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. And by Ameritrail Trailers, Daiwa, Marathon, Black Rifle Coffee Company, Salt's Gone, Power Pole, and Reflex Boat Decking. Long Key Bridge, you've been fishing there, what, since you were five years old? Pretty much, I mean, all, all my life. It was, uh, parents live right on the edge of it, and, and, you know, I've gotten the privilege of fishing up and down the Keys and, you know, quite a few spots, and really haven't found anything that's much better. Yeah, the thing about the bridge is that you can see people that, that go there, and, and you can catch tarpon in all manners of boats. We've seen people in John boats catch fish there. We've seen people in really fancy offshore boats and as long as you can get under the bridge you're pretty good to go. I think that you can really improve your chances by our setup and it starts with either the anchor or the trolling motor and making sure that you can hold yourself in a place where you want to be but then also get out of there real quick because the tarpon's gonna gonna bite and it's gonna take off usually through the bridge and sometimes they behave nicely and they go right through one but sometimes they go back and forth and all throughout there so it's really a team effort because it's going to be fast and furious and so we get that bite and we've got it all set up to where we got the burner and rod holders that are keeping the baits further away from one another when we're fishing live baits and also on the dead bait you can now fish one in the middle and you can fish two out here it's a big help and if one of you gets bit the other person is on the throttle, throwing the anchor, reeling in the other lines, and backing down to the bridge as fast as possible. And if you don't do that, you're probably not gonna land many. Well, the second you hooked up that fish, um, you know, I was, I, I got on the throttle as fast as I could, but at the same time, we had to bring in the other lines. And by the time I got the other lines in, your fish was already through the bridge, around one side. We just weren't fast enough. He'd gotten around there and, and sure enough, chafed through your leader. Yeah, he chafed through my leader. And, and you know, um, I thought about it right at the time. I was like, man, I should have done something different there. And so I'm thinking about it. And the next time I get a bite, I'm thinking, okay, well, what I want to do is I want to set the hook as fast as possible. And then if we can't get back there fast enough, I'm just gonna open the bale. There he is. Come on, come on with it. See around the piling? Yep, bale's open. Oh, he's out in the air, 100% tarpon. Go on that one. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay, okay. So this time I see the fish is going and I'm like, okay, it's the same thing's gonna happen again. Might as well try something different. Just open the bale. So I was just letting that fish go and I saw it jump out past the bridge. And that worked perfect. I just left the bale open, dude. That was cool. Small fish. I'll take it. You gonna come up right now. Here he comes. Yes, sir. Seems like a small fish. I said he was a small fish, but now I see him. He looks quite a bit bigger. Here he goes. <laughs> ah, small fish. That's good. It worked perfect because your line was the same as the one you lost. You know, around the bridge, over there, the difference was you had no tension. I mean, almost right. no tension, just enough to where it wasn't, you know, it, it was controllable. Um, but man, that was perfect. Gave us the time to get around that corner and get in the open, and then you put the tension back on and you had them in the open. Oh, beautiful. 
Man, I love tarpon. I think tackle choice is also really important at the bridge and I have found this rod that I love and this whole setup for fishing the bridge and for fishing for any fish where you want to land them fast and it is an eight foot St. Croix, I think it's a 17 to 40 pound rod, eight feet long. It's as big around as a pool cue at the bottom and I can throw that mullet so far and when you pair that with a, a Daiwa Saltiga, man, that is the perfect fish fighting tool. I just felt like I had total confidence to, to fight that fish so fast and that's so important when you're in these shark areas is fighting the fish as fast as you possibly can and releasing them. All right, Mr. Mr. Tarpon. Pop that hook out for me. I've got the bail open in case he takes off. Perfect. He is right in the Perfect. button. Nice fish. Man, he didn't even scarf my leader. Oh, Mr. Nice Tarpon, job. I am glad to see you, buddy. Nice job. Right on. Let's let him go as quickly as we can. We'll be back out there swimming in no time. See you, buddy. Watch out for the sharks, bud. Yeah, man, nice work. Good job. That's good. Once that tide started rolling after you caught your fish, you know, in my mind, it's immediately time to switch to live bait. No longer the dead bait time, it's time to put the anchor down and really lock that boat into place. And we started using the live bait and it wasn't long before, you know, the mullet started to get nervous. You could see him jumping out of the water, uh, saw a big swirl happen. You're like, all right, it's gonna happen. You know, the, the tarpon are waiting all day for that big tide. And they know that th that's feeding time and it didn't take long before they started challenging. Hooked up. You in? Okay, I'm going around. Let's turn around. Which span do you think? Straight through. It was awesome, man. The guy comes up there, crushed it. I mean, the, one of my favorite things in the whole world is watching that live mullet jumping out of the water and that big tarpon just crushing it, crashing, and zzzz through the bridge. And I, and I, I learned from your mistake the first time and, and your success the second time. And I just immediately, as soon as he was hooked, I just backed off that drag. I didn't open the bail, I just backed off the drag, uh, I mean, to where there was barely any pressure. That gave you time to get the, the boat oriented. Um, back around and sure enough he had gone back and forth around the bridge um, but with that light pressure it allowed it not to break. Come on one more time boy. There he is. <laughs> oh, I love when they do that. It was great to get our hands on that fish. The fish was hooked funny. Most times with the circle hook they get hooked in the upper jaw so I wasn't being very aggressive about grabbing him because I really needed to grab him like this but the first shot that they give you is usually like this right well that circle hook was right there so i had to be really careful about that and did manage to finally get a good grip on that thing where the the circle hook was was not going to get me and uh and we managed to land that fish and it was it was awesome big big fish thank you mr tarpon that was awesome it's beautiful a momentum to uh, add his neck. nice right there okay that's it he's gone he is gone, he's right there. <laughs> yeah, man, Woo! how about that, huh? It's no secret that fuel prices are super high, so boaters everywhere are looking for ways that they can conserve fuel. And there are some ways that you can learn how to run your boat just by using the trim on the engine and also comparing that to your speed and your gallons per hour usage that you can get much better fuel economy to save a good amount of gas in a certain day, but to save a ton of gas over the season. The boat that we're on today has two ways of manipulating the engine trim. I have a jack plate which raises the motor up and down, straight up and down, and I also have trim and tilt so that I can trim and tilt the engine this way. Using both of them in a combination where I'm comparing it to my speed and the gallons per hour that I'm burning 
can get me into the sweet spot where I can save as much as four or five gallons per hour. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have the jack plate all the way down and the engine all the way down. Make sure we're in water deep enough to jump up on plane. 35 miles an hour is a nice cruising speed and it's a good speed for illustration. I'm burning 14 gallons an hour with the engine trimmed all the way down and the jack plate trimmed all the way down. If I wanna to try to improve the fuel economy, I'm gonna to try to keep it at 35 miles an hour. I'm gonna raise the engine trim and I'm gonna just watch that gallons per hour and see if that starts to drop. Once I get it down to about 10 gallons an hour from 14, I'm saving four gallons every hour I'm running that boat at 35 miles an hour. Then I'm gonna to start to manipulate the jack plate if your boat has a jack plate. A lot of boats don't have a jack plate, that's fine. You can still save a ton of gas just by using your trim and tilt and your gallons per hour used. Then you're gonna find that sweet spot by using that trim and tilt and using the jack plate to get from 14 gallons an hour all the way down to under 10. On most days of fishing, we're gonna run the boat two to four hours a day. You do the math. I am going to save a ton of fuel over the course of the season. Other tips for keeping your fuel economy in tip-top shape is to keep your boat as light as possible. Excess gear that you don't need, take it out. If you don't need the live wells full, definitely empty the live wells. A lighter boat is a more efficient boat. You can also play around with props and prop selection if you have the luxury of having a boat shop that will let you borrow props. We all want to be out on the water today. Don't let fuel prices keep you off the water. Learn how to run your boat the most efficient that you possibly can. You'll find that you're saving lots of gas. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Tackle Direct, the world's premier fishing outfitter. Yeti. And by Berno and Rod Holders. Wiley X. Nikon. Buff. Lithium Pros and Golden Boat Lifts. Did you know you can get every episode of Saltwater Experience completely free on Waypoint TV? Go to waypointtv.com and find out how you can download the app or find it on any smart TV. And if that's not enough, you can find the Tom Rowland Podcast on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere you find podcasts. And we'd love to have you as a follower on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. After the tide started ripping out there really hard and um, you know, the start, sun started getting low, often those fish will move away from the bridge out into the bay to feed. So, so we kind of uh, moved spots away from the bridge, got, got further out into the bay there, and it didn't take long. You know, all of a sudden we see these fish starting to roll out and move towards the bay. Yeah, you know, that is much more like the way that I fish for them in the lower keys is you see them rolling, you get above them, go over, drop the anchor, and then put your baits back and, and drift a bait back to them. So I was really confident in that situation. We saw them roll and we knew where they were and they were kind of holding in that one little spot. These tarpon will probably start rolling through down, down the, uh, bank here. Come on, tarpon. To experience a, a, a situation like, like we have so many times where you fish until sunset and you just see that beautiful sunset going down and you're just lucky to be there, man. It's a really beautiful time of day. It's really cool that you're surrounded by these big fish. If you get to catch one, even better. If not, we already had a fantastic day. Here it is, he's on. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Nice. Nice. It's awesome, man. That is awesome. You end up getting one more bite and... Uh, right after the sunset, you know, you could just, you know, you know that that's where, where you know, we, were, we, we did good to get bites throughout the day on that outgoing tide, but you know that, that nighttime is when they make their living. That's when they do the majority of their feeding, and when that sun hits the water, 
it, it, they stop being, you know, semi-hungry and they just go to town. And, and um, sure enough, one comes up and, and it hammers that mullet um, and, uh, and just big jumps. I mean, he was going sideways, um, air swimming, doing everything we could. And, um, you spin that boat around, chase him down, got kind of wrapped around a crab buoy for a second and then ended up chafing off there. But uh, just a perfect end to an awesome day. Yeah, man. We're lucky to, we're lucky to be able to experience that every single year. There he goes. Whew. Pretty cool. That was a big one. All right. That was awesome. <laughs> good job. That's a good way to end it. I love it. Um, well, let's roll back there and get that anchor and head home. What do you think? Good day. Ended with a beautiful sunset and a tarpon. How do you do better than that?